Hello, welcome to Anson Griffin's uh, occasional series and MATLAB tutorials. Today we'll be looking at segmentation, as have the last few tutorials, but today we'll be looking at texture segmentation based on entropy. So I uh, carried this out in MATLAB and I published it to a Word file today, just to be slightly different. And I have my table of contents here, so I think I can get on with it without much more ado. So by at this stage you should know where the mouse is hovering now. Clear all, clears the workspace, close all, closes any open figures, and CLC clears the command window. Just rest here. So we're going to read in the brick image. We'll look at it in a second. Convert it to grayscale. And then we're going to run the uh, MATLAB command entropy filter. So what I want to try and do is to detect uh, different sorts of texture are based on the entropy of the texture that we see before us. Entropy would be the randomness or the disorder or whatever word you'd like to use. And on this line here, uh, when we run this command, we'll get uh, values that are double. And then matte to grey converts these double values to grayscale. That's not to 255. And so we have a grayscale image. So if we just go down a little bit here. There's the original image uh, in grayscale, it was in colour. So we have red brick and white grouting. So what we want to do is try to segment out the bricks. <coughs> There's to be entropy filtered. So you can see basically there are two types of uh, entropy here. There's the brick and there's the grouting with some lines in here. Uh, stage two. We want to convert the entropy uh, filtered image to black and white, and then we are going to complement it. So we're going to convert this line here. Uh, how do we convert uh, grayscale to black and white? I am 2BW. So there it is. We can just see it hoving into view. And then in image processing, usually the objects of interest are white and the background is black. So we want to complement this image. And how we complement it is just there, tilde. So there's the original image. And if we just go down a bit, there's the complemented image. And if I just pause here, there are a number of things uh, that are a cause con for concern here. We have these spurious bits of white. We have some holes here. And we have some holes there. And in here we have these indentations. So we need to sort of tidy up the image. So going on a little bit. So we'd like to try and remove these, sorry, these small bits here. So how do I about that? I used an opening. An opening is an erosion followed by a dilation. So I used a structure element that was square seven, perhaps a little big, but you know it'll do the job. So you can see here that we've removed the bits of grouting. Uh, I haven't removed the large white bits here, and you can see that uh, we've had a couple of inlets here, and we have a couple of holes. So we want to try and tidy this image up here a little bit. So how am I going to get rid of the holes in the bricks? Well, there's a command I am fill with the holes option. So we've done that. And then what we want to try and do is we want to try and get rid of those uh, inlets. And how I did that was I created another uh, structuring element here, SE2, and I closed it. And the closing is a dilation followed by an erosion. And so let's see how we got on underneath. We're nearly there. Um, so this is the first bit. This is the uh, the one with the holes. So you can see we have a couple of inlets. So we still got these big lads up here. Uh, this is the uh, closing. You can see we got rid of most of the um, inlets, but we've left with this hole here. Now why did that happen? Just to go back to there. We closed the neck of it, but we're left with the inside of it. Now by rights, I should have done I am fill holes again to get rid of that, but. I said I'd leave it alone. Okay, we still got these bits up here, these large white blobs. We got to get rid of them. So how did I do that? Well, I did. I looked for in the image that we just did. Uh, I looked for areas of white that were more than 500. That would be just that would have more. Sorry, more than 400 square pixels. So is member. So I've just found those ones that have more than 400 square pixels. So what would happen then is I was going to get rid of these blobs up here or any other very small blobs that the erosion followed by the dilation didn't get rid of. 
there we are we still got that lad there but there's no problem there now <coughs> uh, when we ran the entropy filter we're running a 3x3 three three, so uh, just the way it works we lost some of the area of the brick so to try and recover that I just dilate it by using a structuring element that's the same size so you can see the bricks aren't quite the gap between the bricks isn't quite as far as it was in the original I don't want to fly up the top of the screen but I think you get the general idea now we want to display the bricks in row order and I'd just like to compliment or uh, credit I should say Steve Edens of the MATLAB blog site because I took this code uh, from him here how to uh, sort the labelled objects so we have BW label hopefully you're familiar with that and we have region props and we got these uh, parameters area boundary box extreme and centroid so uh, using the code that Steve got it's available on the website uh, there we have them and they're in row order so this is the first in row order second in row order and this is based on the centroid location so we have the bricks nicely numbered there and then I said well perhaps we only want whole bricks we don't want bricks joining the edges so that's what I did next I did I am a clear border so that will get rid of any white areas any bricks attaching the edge I used the same bit of code again using BW label and region props and we just scroll down there and there we are and then if I wanted I would be able to get certain statistics out that's just the area the centroid the bounding box etc etc okay so thanks very much for listening bye bye